I'm Bob James. Nice to meet you. To meet you nice. <laughs> what am I supposed to be doing now? Oh, I'm actually supposed to be cleaning the cell, am I? You want to take the video as I do it? Okay. Let's have a serious one, shall we? Will we start again and have a serious one? No, we're not. Okay. Right. I'm just going to clean the cell and make sure, see how easy it is to move across. I'm going to push across, push the cell across sideways and see if it moves. Now, I'm pushing with my thumb, my finger, but it's not moving. It's only moved a little tiny bit. So therefore what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some ethanol to this. Just let it free the cell. So that should be now free. And now I can move it once more. It should be able to slide across. No problems. Now sliding across like that. Now I can clean the cell to begin with, like this. Let it start. And then I will clean the cell with ethanol properly using another piece of paper. Start in one corner, rotate, clean, move across a little bit, still slightly wet with ethanol, slightly clean here as well, a little further, now getting drier, I start to pull it across, you should see the cell is now clean and dry. I hold it to the light just to see and a little bit of pressure there. And that is now clean. When you're holding a cell, always hold the cell with two fingers. If you hold it with more than two fingers, it might fall out. With two fingers, you always hold the cell with two fingers safer. So it's safer. So the cell, that part is ready. This is the other half, just to clean. Again. Again in the corner. A little further across. Dryer again, and finally a dry corner just to make sure it's nice and dry. Now, once more, check with the light again, nice and clean, nice and clean, nice and dry. Now, I've got the cell in a direction, so they've got a little marker here, and I've marked it so that when I'm using my right hand to fill the cell, I can fill the cell from this direction, and I will then use the cover slip, and I have the cover slip here, and I will slide that cover slip onto the cell. So the cell is like that, I will slide the cover slip onto the cell. And I'll be using lysozyme this time as our test cell. So here's the material we've got. I'll be using it so that I put the material, fill it, and I'll put material into this corner down here. So I'll fill into this corner here so that I can then slide it onto the cell like that. Goes. And another piece of paper ready because that piece of paper is going to be used to squeeze any excess liquid out from your cell. So, check this 
so Got unnecessary in help. Always know how much material you have to put into your cell and always use the same material for that cell. I'm going to present it down here. I'm just going to put a little drop here into the corner like that. And I'm going to slide this on as I had at an angle. And slide that on as an angle. Take it into position. So that I'm now going to line across there. The mark is in position. And I'm now going to squeeze it so that there's any excess material coming out. And squeeze off any excess material. from the cell. I'm now going to squeeze off more material, always pressing at the edges of the cell, not in the middle. Just pressing the edges of the cell, mostly down on the board as opposed to the actual cell itself. And finally, with the cell positioned like that, I'm now going to just clean off the rest of the cell to make sure it's ready. Then, using the light, I'll just check to make sure that the cell is properly filled and that there is no bubble in the cell. Sometimes you can get bubbles in the cell and you don't want a bubble because that will interfere with your signal. So, again, check with the light, a little bit of cleaning just to make sure it's clean. Good, that's clean. Now, loading the cell. On this particular cell holder we have some guide that we could use to load the cell in exactly the same position each time. So I'm going to use that guide and I'm going to use this spot here to line with it. Still got two fingers on there. I'm now going to change it so this is the only time you'll use anything more than two fingers. And this is where you line it up and carefully try and put it into the cell like that. Now, that's almost in exactly the right spot. It's almost in exactly the right position. But just to make sure it's in the right position, you can use a pipette tip. Just push it up gently inside, twist that pipette tip around until it lines the spot in the right position. I've only got to use this and move it very, very slightly. Very slightly indeed. Just check that is in the right position. And your cell must be in exactly the same position each time. Because if it is, if it is not, then you will get some problems with the cell itself because the cell has some circular dichroism effects inside the cell. So I've got the plate here and the plate there. That is right. But if I had the plate here and the plate like that, that would be wrong because it's different from the way I did for the actual baseline, for example. So I would do my baseline this way, I would do my sample this way. I would not do my baseline this way and my sample that way and I would not do my baseline this way and my sample that way because they would be in the wrong positions. It's always got to be that for the sample, that for the baseline. And when you're using it on the synchrotron, do your sample first because then you can optimize your conditions for your sample. Now I have put spaces in here, I'm just tucking them down, I put spaces in there to make sure that we fill the remaining volume to tighten our lid down onto the actual cell. And these spaces, the rings, make sure that they are the things that turn and not the cell itself. 
so the cell will not turn, only those rings will now turn if I tighten them down. I'm just going to find the right position, which I have, and tighten it down by hand, and I know that the number of spaces that I've got in here will make sure that that is now a tight fit onto our cell holder here, and now this is ready to go actually into the sample chamber. Do you want me to fill the sample chamber? Okay. You'd like me to fill the sample chamber? Okay. That would be fun. Okay, walk this way. Okay. Now I'm going to fill the sample chamber, and I want to make sure that my sample cell is as close to the detector as possible, because you do not want scattering to miss the detector. You want all of your light to hit the detector. So I'm going to place this into the sample chamber, which is in here, so that my cell is as close to the detector in that chamber as possible. First things first, unscrew my chamber. Now this is not an easy chamber at the moment. By the time you possibly use this machine, it would be a different chamber. I'm now going to present this in here, and with a little bit of luck, I will be fortunate. With a little bit of misfortune, I won't be fortunate. So let's see if I can get this into position. And that should be just about... Just wait and see. Just about here. That's it. We're in position now, and we're in. Now, I'm putting the thermal couple, there's a little tiny notch in this chamber. I'm putting the thermal couple in at the moment. It will be slightly different perhaps by the time you actually do it yourselves. And I'm pushing this into the chamber right at the other end. And with a little bit of luck, I've got that in position. And you can just see that I've pushed that so that the cell is now flush, i.e. as flat with the chamber in this position here. So that's where the head of the cell is. Everything is now ready for the next run. I'm going to close this sample up and we've got it flushing with nitrogen and we will flush with nitrogen for about five to ten minutes before we actually make our run. So that it is fully flushed with nitrogen in this chamber. Finally, having done this and tightened it down properly, so there's a nice flow of nitrogen coming out from this sample here. I can feel it. You can possibly hear it on the video. I don't know if you can. You can possibly hear it. I will now make sure that I open up the photo multiplier tube so that it's been protected from the light. And I will now open up the other shutter as well. So the whole machine is now ready for use and in about 10 minutes, between 5 and 10 minutes, our run will start. And that should be how you load your samples into your cells. Have fun.